2021 Senate uh, Fed and State Committee to order. Uh, first up, we have uh, requests for bill introductions, and I actually have one. It is RS0021. It's concerning elections, and it has to do with the voter verifiable paper ballot. Do we have any objections to this bill introduction? Seeing none, that bill is introduced. Do we have any more bill introductions today? No more bill introductions? Okay. Next, we are going to move on to our hearing of Senate Bill 35. We are now open, opening our hearing on Senate Bill 35, removing the option of extension of the time for receipt of advanced mail ballots after the third day following election. And at this time, we'll have a staff briefing on the bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, you should have in your uh, bill packets a memo from our office uh, summarizing Senate Bill 35. Uh, under current law, advanced voting ballots must be postmarked by the close of polls on the day of the election. Um, the deadline for county election offices to receive those ballots is the last mail delivery on the third day following the date of election. Um, but then current law also uh, gives the Secretary of State discretion to extend that three-day um, receipt period um, beyond the third day. Senate Bill 35 would strike that discretionary um, option for the Secretary of State. So under Senate Bill 35, all advanced voting ballots must be received by the last mail delivery on the third day following the election. Uh, the bill will go into effect on July 1st of this year, passed, and I'll be happy to answer any questions of the committee. Committee members, do we have any questions for the revisor? Not seeing any. Jason, thank you. Next, we will move on to proponents, and the first proponent is myself. So I'll just give a, I'm the only one giving oral testimony as a proponent, so I promise I will be very brief. This is very simple. Like uh, Jason said, it just it marks off the um, Secretary of State of having that option of extending a mail-in ballot deadline. And my reasoning for introducing this bill is I personally, uh, do not uh, want to have someone, one single person in the state of Kansas to have unilateral ability to change a uh, due date on an election. And that is my sole reason. So I will stand for any questions. Senator Ware. So without the, without the flexibility that we have now, what if, you know, we have another big event, uh, another COVID-ish or weather event or, you know, something unforeseeable. Um, where does that leave us? Well, we had that event this year and it was not extended. They were able to utilize other options to do that. So it's already proven that it's not a necessity that we have it in the statute, that we can leave it up to the state legislature since it is our constitutional duty to set the procedures or set the rules and laws for elections, so that's still in effect. And right, three days is, is what we did and what we've been doing. I don't know, I, I, it just seems like leaving a little wiggle room for the unknown, you know, it, because the next one may not be like this one that the three days worked for us. So that was just, I, I understand not leaving it in one person's hands, but. Anyway, thank you. It's my concern. Senator Dietrich. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I may have a question of the revisor, perhaps. And I'm sorry I didn't think of this earlier. Jason, are you still available for a question? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, Jason, do you know how long this provision has been in statute? Uh, no, I don't know. Um, I would have to do a little quick research. Can I get back to you on that? Oh, certainly. And I, may I ask a second question that may require research? Has this provision been used in our recent past where the election date has been extended for mail-in ballots? Jason, I would I, need... 
Oh, go ahead. Uh, if I could, we do have a representative from the Secretary of State's office. They would probably have that answer. Katie, could you come up and uh, answer that question, please? You state your name and who you're with. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm Katie Copal. You all know me. Um, <laughs> the provision, and Clay is happy to talk to this as part of our testimony. Um, our office, if we know you guys are the policymakers, so we try to be neutral on just about anything unless there are major concerns. We're neutral on this bill, but we have no objection to it. Um, this uh, per particular provision has not been used. Are there any other questions? Opponents? Senator Foscado. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so um, what about um, having problems with the United States Postal Service? That may occur. Um, we, are, we are getting more to whereas individuals can purchase their stamps online. They can do. Um, um, but then there's people like me. I just like the good old uh, United States Postal Service. I like to vote in person. Um, just, you know, I'm, I'm still old school. Um, so, however, it's, we are in the 21st century where everything just keeps changing. And so one thing that we know is consistent is change. And so... Um, if you would please restate your, so you said you didn't want one person to have that sole um, duty, but Secretary of State is elected to kind of um, help make some of those decisions at his, so you don't think you're taking away his discretion to um, operate. Um, and then Mr. Chairman, don't we want to consider that the United States Postal Service, because for me, um, for two months, my mail normally would come like at 11 or one in the afternoon, but it actually came at 5.30 and 6 p.m. Um, and, and so I just happened to be outside and I saw this person walking down the street with a like a the minor headlight on his forehead and i'm like who is this person and it was the postal carrier and we took a selfie together but <laughs> i i got it on my phone now and so i just said wow i couldn't do this job but still my mail was late and so don't we want to consider that with changing um that option for the secretary of state mr chairman or yeah, you can be Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Foscado. And um, that's why there's a three-day extension already in there in statute. Um, the mail, you know, I think it would be something that the, I'm not sure the Secretary of State having that much uh, would want to put something out there just because we started getting a lot of complaints about the Postal Service. I think the intent originally was for something different. I don't know, but... I, we we do have as a policy three days after the election day to receive advanced ballots, so that's still there to uh, take into consideration the postal service. Do we have any other for, further questions for proponents? Is there anybody else wanting to testify, Senator Foscado? So I'm I'm just saying. Um, so since we already have that three day period, so. Um, did the Secretary of State weigh in on this of us taking away his or her power? They're scheduled to testify as neutral. Is there anybody else that would like to testify as a proponent? Not seeing any um, committee. I would uh, draw your attention to the written only uh, proponents. Susan Haynes herself from Wichita, Kansas. Emily Hamburger herself from Bel Air, Kansas, and John Axtell and Blake Branson, both of Bel Air, Kansas. We will now move to neutral testimony. First up, we have Clay Barker, Deputy Secretary of State. Welcome, Clay. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Chair, it's members of the committee, it's a pleasure to be here again. As uh, my colleague Katie stated, the Secretary of State's position on this bill is neutral. Um, although we have a general unease with unfettered discretion given to any sole individual, we believe it's up to the legislature to decide what powers can be granted and what limits can be um, placed on that grant of power to the Secretary of State. Uh, I'll give you some general background on this and answer some questions. First, the statute was passed in 2017 that gave the three extra days for mail ballots to arrive as long as they were postmarked by election day. It also pushed back the date when advanced ballots could be requested. So you have to request them earlier. That was because it became clear the Postal Service could no longer uh, confirm that mail would be delivered within three days. It was more like a seven day standard. So this statute took that into account and sort of pushed the, the boundaries of mail back. You could receive them later, but you had to ask for the ballot earlier. It has never been used or re, um, by the Secretary of State. We've only had I guess, four elections. He could have used it in two primaries and two generals. Um, as you're probably all aware, the Secretary of State does not have a lot of direct role in running elections. That's done by the 105 county election officers. We have a lot of a supportive role. There's 380 statutes that tell us to do things in regards to elections. You know, for instance, 43 give us power for regulations. We approve forms, we file things, we collect fees, we certify things, we do a lot of coordination and liaison because of our expertise. Only two statutes allow the secretary, and this is one of them, to actually make a substantive change during the election process, which would be probably the three weeks before election day. Um, so there's not this, this grant of authority is not common to the secretary to be able to jump in and change something that's already set in statute. Um, just some more background. In the last election, though we don't have the final numbers yet, extrapolating from what we have, probably only four, maybe 500 ballots arrived in the mail after Friday. You know, and some of those would have been postmarked on election day, some were postmarked late, some didn't have a postmark. No indication of whether they would have been counted at all, but it's a pretty small number that actually showed up that late. Uh, part of that is because people were more aware of um, using mail ballots and the problems with the Postal Service being slow. Part of that was drop boxes, uh, remove some of the pressure on the Postal Service. Uh, some of the concerns we'd have if the Secretary were to use this authority, it would probably be viewed by many people on both sides as a partisan move to help one side or the other. I'm not sure how you determine that, but thinking one party or the other would have more late ballots that would be counted, though obviously there weren't many. It might engender voter confusion, the way misinformation gets spun around in elections. If you change something during the election process, it can cause confusion and lack of trust in the system that someone's trying to game it, for instance. And it would add on some burden, probably not a lot, to counties who have a lot to do between election day and the county canvas. Um, analyzing provisional ballots, counting write-in ballots, looking at ballots that didn't scan properly, just all those tasks, this just adds in one more. They'd have to hold off because a few more ballots might come in. Uh, but again, our position on this is neutral. It's up to the legislature what power to grant us. And I stand for any questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Clay, for your testimony. Uh, committee members, do we have any questions for the conferee? Senator Ware. Yeah, you say the, uh, making a change during the election process um, is, it, um, okay. So what, uh, if, if the idea, so the, it only comes up right uh, at election time? It wouldn't be something that people would know ahead of time then? The, it's not, discretionary power is not bounded. I guess the secretary could announce it months before an election. The way we saw it is during the election process, so mail ballots have gone out, they start coming in, something happens, and then during that process, the secretary would tell the counties, you can take ballots one day later, maybe just Saturday, a week later, it's not bounded. So that change would probably occur while people are voting. But again, the statute doesn't say that. It just says he can grant extra time. Any further questions for the conferee? Uh, Senator Longbine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Clay, in, in thinking through this, um, what if there was a natural disaster in one of our counties or multiple counties um, that prevented 
any mail ballots that were from the last four or five days, um, tornado, earthquake, whatever, um, prevented mail service, what would happen to those ballots? The secretary was not able to extend because of a natural disaster or something like that. They just not be counted. We discussed that in house because we had a lot of questions about whether the secretary would use this authority during the last election, and some people demanded that he use it. Um, what would trigger a proper use of this as opposed to just an arbitrary? And that would be one where something occurred that stopped the postal service delivery, but the voters didn't have notice. Like maybe it happened on the day before election day, so mail was caught. Uh, an example I always used was anthrax at a postal office since that had happened before. Um, but we never made a decision on what policy or what actual type of emergency would trigger the use of this. But if ballots were stuck in the postal service and didn't arrive by Friday with last delivery, uh, they wouldn't be counted. Senator Foscato. Um, um, Mr. Chair. Vice Chairman, just for the record, if Jason Long could reinstate current law about the three days and then exactly what this bill wants to do, and then, Mr. Chairman, would you entertain with the question from the Senator Longbine that you add language in a, um, uh, an amendment just to say unless there's a natural disaster preventing We'll let Jason answer the first part, and then we'll go to the second part. Jason? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Fauscado, um, current law requires that all advanced voting ballots um, be uh, received by the county election officer um, by the last mail delivery of the third day after the election date, and then grants the Secretary of State the discretion to extend that time um, for receipt of the ballots, Senate Bill 35 would simply remove the Secretary of State's ability to extend that three-day time period. Thank you, Jason. And now to the second part. I guess what I would comment on a natural disaster when I think about uh, Greensburg, it was a total a tornado, it was a natural disaster. It took everything out, the post office and everything. So during that situation, if that was during election time, and that post office had ballots, that natural disaster takes out that post office, with it would be the ballots. What would you do in a situation like that, and how would keeping this in fix that? Because you don't know what ballots are there. Mr. Chair, we've actually never had to face that and only discussed it in theory, so I'm not quite sure what we would do. We always try to ensure as many ballots are counted as possible, but we also know there has to be a, a deadline so the process can move forward and we get final official results, and it's a balance. And just for the colleague urge me to tell you, the other statute that gives the secretary discretion is 25622, which says the secretary in an emergency can allow for alternative ballot distribution. And that was passed in 1998, I believe, when a, a polling in Wilson County was surrounded by a flood and nobody could get to it in response to that issue. There is another source of authority on that, but I couldn't give you a complete answer to that question. I'd have to wait and see what the actual facts and circumstances are. Thank you. Are there any further questions for neutral opponents? Senator Peterson, not opponents, but neutral conferee. This bill does not change that other, that other authority, though, does it? No, I believe there's another bill that would somewhat modify that authority to, to put a little more um, restrictions on it. So again, so an individual Secretary of State couldn't just um, use that power. For instance, in this last election, there were demands that Secretary Schwab cancel all polling places and go to all mail ballots just based on that statute. Thank you. Any more questions for neutral? Not seeing any. Thank you very much for your testimony. Do we have anybody else that would like to testify as a neutral? Humphrey. Not seeing any, we will move to opponents. And the only opponent that we have is remote, and that is Austin Spiller with the ACLU of Kansas. Austin, welcome to the committee. Uh, thank you so much, Vice Chair Hildebrand. Um, members of this committee, I do appreciate the opportunity to present testimony virtually today. 
Um, my name is Austin Spiller. I'm the policy associate with the ACLU of Kansas, and we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that works to preserve and strengthen the constitutional liberties of all Kansans. Um, and with that said, we do oppose the passage of SB 35. And Vice Chair Hildebrand, I do appreciate you setting forth the reasoning uh, for introducing the bill. Um, uh, but I would like to do uh, walk through um, a few of the reasons why we why we disagree. Um, first, this bill diminishes trust in our democracy in elections. We want voters to have a good experience participating in democracy and to feel confident that their vote counts and is counted. This past election cycle in Kansas proved the value of flexibility in providing that good experience. Mail-in ballots are a viable efficient, secure alternative to voting in person. And while our local post offices work diligently to deliver mail-in ballots, this is not a valid reason to remove all flexibility to adjust, if necessary, to ensure fair elections in times of natural disasters, pandemics, wars, or in light of another urgent, unforeseen delay. Um, and like Senator Faust Godot uh, mentioned, um, you know, this bill fails to acknowledge like natural disasters, wars. I mean, there's just so much unknown in our, in our lives. And we need to um, accept the fact that United States Postal Service may not always be capable of delivering mail within that three day time frame. Um, you know, it's been mentioned, you know, if we have a natural disaster strike right before election day, um, you know, what would happen to those ballots? We need flexibility to adjust for that uninterrupted mail service. If you, if you pass this bill as written, you will take that flexibility away and make government less responsive to citizens' needs in times of crisis. And finally, and most importantly, this bill as written it, it is an overt act of voter suppression. Um, while we do understand the reasoning for um, you know, introducing it, we do not feel like that is a valid reason um, for en enacting the limits posed by this bill. It is a punishment to hardworking, civically minded Kansans who do their part to mail their ballots on time and who in turn expect every properly postmarked vote to count. This bill eliminates all flexibility when properly postmarked ballots may otherwise count. It undermines our notion of basic fairness and is an unsubtle eroding of the right to vote in Kansas. We urge this committee to preserve Kansans' constitutional right to vote, and we reject SB 35 as written. Running a fair elections means retaining the flexibility to account for things like natural disasters, pandemics, wars, or other urgent crises. This flexibility is even more important because our elections rely on the Postal Service. And like I said, SB 35 removes that flexibility at the detriment to all Kansans and to our democracy. I thank you again for the opportunity to present testimony virtually, and I am happy to answer questions for this committee at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thank you, Austin, for your testimony. Um, committee members, we will open up for questions, but I do have a question for you, Austin. Um, the, seems like the crux of your uh, testimony and opposition is uh, in case of a natural disaster. I will. I did pull up uh, state statute 25-622, and I'm going to read it real quick. It says, ballot distribution in times of disasters or emergencies. The Secretary of State may designate temporary alternative methods for the distribution of ballots in cases of war, natural or man-made disasters equipment failures or emergency conditions or circumstances which make it impossible for voters in a voting area to obtain ballots as provided by law. So knowing that now, do you, would that change your objection to this bill? Or at um, least that part of it? Uh, no, Senator uh, Hildebrand, it would not um, because the, um, at least my understanding of the bill that you just cited, it talks about distribution. Um, and we are talking about once people have already received their ballots, they have been distributed. Um, they have put it in the mailbox um, according to the law. It's postmarked um, by election day. Um, so really, it's, we're not talking about the distribution of ballots. We're talking about um, providing a fair process who have mailed in their ballot according to law by, by election day. Um, they, have the right, they should have the right to have their vote counted. 
Um, and so that is our, our objection, sir. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for the conferee? Senator Ware. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so the one bill is strictly and only about distribution of ballots, and the other bill is strictly and only about the return of ballots. So the one doesn't speak to the other. That is that is certainly my understanding and, and, and um, interpretation of the bill. I'm happy to confer with my colleagues and um, um, yeah, you know, get their consensus as well. But I that is that is my interpretation, and I, I feel like it's a fairly straightforward reading of that. Thank you. Um, maybe Clay, would you be able to come up and on the distribution? It's pretty a distribution is pretty wide open uh, word that you can mean. The distribution to and from there's two two ways to distribute going to and returning so can you give some clarification on on that mr chair probably can't bring a lot of clarification 622 is 20 plus years old it also has never been used and sometimes we even forget it's there and it's pretty expansive everything from i suppose thermal nuclear war to your printer runs out of ink that the secretary could issue a directive to change how ballots are distributed. It was also passed about the same time mail ballots were just beginning, so I'm not sure how it envisioned that use. But um, as far as distribution goes, we, again, thought about this, discussed it in-house. If something were to happen, say, on election day and ballots were stuck in a post office, the secretary could perhaps authorize issuing mail ballots to those people that would then fill them out and submit them as provisionals so they wouldn't vote twice but their ballot would get in i don't know if that would cure the problem but to answer your question distribution is a pretty broad term and again it's it's given the secretary discretion there's words there but how he actually applies it to the facts we're not sure you know it have to be case by case thank you clay do we have any further questions for the conferee senator foscado um, thank you mr vice chairman so i've served on the election commission uh, a committee in the House of Representatives and here in the Senate uh, since 2004. And so I live in Cedric County. Um, the distribution piece, um, that's why I asked Jason Long, the revisor, to explain it for the listeners and for us who in here who don't serve on the Election Commission um, to understand what current law is and what this Senate Bill 35 attempts to do. Um, Mr. Vice Chairman and members, um, so if I request an advance ballot by law, there is a time that I should receive that ballot, and then it, 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 it lists on that application when I need to return it by in order to receive an advance ballot, and then it also tells you you need to have this mailed back and postmarked by this day. So that's already kind of covered. Uh, however, during COVID-19 and the, the, the tardiness of the U.S. United States Postal Service, I did have a lot of people calling me saying, even if I abide by current law and I mail my uh, advance ballot back I just don't see it getting there in time because of how late the mail was running. And so that's where everybody started to, you know, take their ballot to the election office. So I, but I wanted to ask the conferee, um, the opponent, with what we've, as the vice chairman said, with the other discussion that you've heard of existing law and that there should be some deadline and there is, if I'm understanding Mr. Clay um, correctly, um, and I kind of read over the Secretary of State's notes, um, that there's already something in place. I think Clay mentioned, and I'm glad I didn't live wherever that was where a flood kept everything out. Wow. I'm glad I can swim. But... Um, so does that change your mind or do you have an amendment, something that we can 
address this issue and not affect one's right to vote in democracy. Thank you. Thank you for the comment and question, Senator Fauscado. Um, but to be honest, we do not have an amendment at this time. Um, I think probably one of the main reasons we do not have an amendment um, is that really, um, you know, we recognize that, um, you know, that deadlines are necessary to like keep things moving forward. Um, but it's just, it's hard to, um, you know, reconcile um, just removing all of that discretion. Um, we are certainly to keep, happy to keep the conversation open. Um, uh, but like I've mentioned, um, really as written, um, it, um, even with considering this other bill that talks about distribution, um, I really think if this bill were to pass, it's um, certainly going it to potentially be a, a bad precedent. Um, and I think it's really going to uh, send a bad example to, or it's going to send a bad message to the people of Kansas. Um, like I mentioned, I mean, we have hardworking people that are trying to be participate in our democracy. They're playing by the rules and to just um, take away any discretion to have their vote counted and it's gonna erode that trust. Um, you know, this, you know, this flexibility to extend the deadline, I mean, it may never have to be used, but why, why remove that? Um, you know, we've, like I said, I mean, we've all talked about natural disasters, everything like that. Like, it's just why, why have to take that extreme? Um, and, and that's really the, the crux of our, our position. Um, you know, there's, we're happy to uh, keep this dialogue open with y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. 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 Vice Chairman, I think, can I just respond? I think that we heard that the Secretary of State, some people were trying to force him to use it when you know, it should be up to him to use it. So we don't want to, we don't want people to take advantage of it. So I see the point of the legislation from that perspective, Mr. Vice Chairman. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Do we have any other further questions for the conferee? Seeing none, thank you, Austin, again, for your testimony. And just a quick comment about it. This is just the uh, testimony from the Secretary of State's office, Clay Barker. You know, you put one person with unilateral uh, ability to change something, the pressure on that one individual to change something for any reason is always there. And that is a big burden to put on one individual for over 3 million Kansans. So with that, we will, are there any other opponents for wanting to testify on this bill? Not seeing any, we will now close the hearing on Senate Bill 35. We will move on to the next order of business. There is no next order of business, so unless there is something to come before the committee, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.